all of the problems from these videos can be downloaded from accountingworkbook.com. Go to the website, click the PDF link, and you can download a copy of the workbook for yourself. Also on the website, you'll find all of my accounting videos, not just the ones I upload to YouTube. In fact, on the website, there are over a hundred extra videos that I haven't uploaded to YouTube. So I do hope you'll check out accountingworkbook.com. Okay, let's get started with the problem. All right, the next budget on our list is the direct labor budget, problem 84A. Uh, so this budget, requires a production budget first. You gotta need to know what you're gonna produce to know what kind of direct labor workforce you need to employ. So the question says, McCluskey Company's production requirements are as follows. Units to be produced, and again, that's a production uh, budget. Uh, and then it says, each unit requires two direct labor hours to produce, and workers are paid 15 bucks an hour. Required A, assuming a completely flexible work uh, labor force, prepare the company's direct labor budget for the quarter. So this is the easiest scenario. We can call people in when we need them. We can send them home when they do we don't need them. There's no sort of union contract or, uh, you know, a special law that requires us to, to keep our workers there. It's just like bring them in when we need them, send them home when we don't. Uh, it's a capitalist heaven, uh, part A. So uh, let's get to it. The name of the company, McCluskey Company, will be the starting point here. We are preparing a direct labor budget. And this is for the quarter ended March 31st. Okay, and of course that quarter is January, February, March. So the first budget is one of the all time easiest budgets. Touch wood, uh, you know, hopefully we don't make any mistakes, but there's not a lot of data here, right? Like our last few problems, it's been like a whole page and you're kind of having to scan through and figure out 20% of this goes where. This one is like, look, we're gonna make 5,000 units. Each unit takes two hours. Now I'll say this, whenever I write a, a number as a word that will screw up 10% of my class, I can tell you they'll just miss it. Uh, and I pay my uh, laborers 15 bucks an hour. So 5,000 units that take two hours each. So let's, let's fill this in. Units to be produced. For January, it was 5,000. I'll do the rest. I, I can't remember them off the top of my head. Uh, uh, <laughs> I'm trying to think of the right way to say this. I want to say amount of time per unit, right? Like uh, time per unit, two hours. So direct labor time required. In January, I'm going to need 10,000 hours worth of labor time, right? I need my employees working. I need them to make 5,000 units. It takes two hours per unit, so I need them working 10,000 hours. Uh, cost per hour is uh, $15 per hour. So my direct labor cost for the month of January is $150,000. So not only, I, I'm kind of two birds with one stone with this budget. Right, I'm killing two birds with one stone. First, I'm saying, look, I need 10,000 hours of labor. So if, if my average employee, 40 hours a week, that's 160 hours a month, I, I can say, okay, well, I need then 160 hours a month. I need whatever, 80 employees, whatever number gets me to 10,000. That's how many people I need. And, and getting that many people might be a problem. Depends on the company, depends on what the task is. Uh, then the other bird I'm killing with this stone is I'm saying, well, if I get these people, they're going to cost me 15 bucks an hour. That's $150,000 I need to have ready. So this is like a cash flow 
uh, problem that we're also examining because we know, okay, with, you know, our supplier might wait 30 days to be paid. Our employees aren't waiting 30 days to be paid. So we know we're going to have to pay them in a pretty timely manner. We're going to have cash flowing out the door of 150 grand here. And so that is a uh, something that's going to be relevant. So two relevant things for my planning here are revealed by this budget. I thought this was going to be really fast. I'm, I'm not even done the easy one yet, and it's five minutes. Uh, let's continue. We'll do February and March a lot quicker. February 6,000, March 7,000. And for the quarter, 18,000. Two hours, two hours, two hours. Uh, six times two is 12,000 hours. Seven times two is 14,000 hours for March. That's a four. 18,000 times two is 36,000 hours for our company for the quarter. 15 bucks an hour, 15 bucks an hour, 15 bucks an hour. And let's do the math, 12,000. times 15 is $180,000. This one's going to be two ten thousand dollars $360,540,000. Double check that last one. Yep, okay, so our direct labor uh, budget says, look, during this quarter, I'm going to need 36,000 hours in my direct labor workforce, and we'd break it down by month. So probably to go from January to February, we're going to need to hire people. Like we need more people and we need more people again in March. So like this informs our HR department to say nothing of accounting, to say nothing of dollars and cents. We need people. And that information got supplied by the production budget. Uh, the cost per the cost data certainly feeds into our budgets and our other plans, but just the fact that we need people uh, is going to be very relevant to our company. Okay, let's let's do the second version of this question. So part B says, refer back to the original data. Assume that the company has a permanent permanent employees who are guaranteed to be paid for at least eleven thousand five hundred of work each month. If production requires less than 11,500 hours, they will be paid for 11,500 hours anyway. Any amount of work above 11,500 will be paid at one and a half times their normal hourly rate. So this might be more like a union environment where there's sort of strict uh, closed shop and you know people are required minimum hours of work. We can't be sending them home when we want to or bringing them in when we want to. We have to pay them for a set amount of time. And if they work more than that amount of time, they get overtime. I'm not bringing in new people. I'm just paying the same people overtime. Um, so there's a little bit more stringent requirements, but again, this is more of a reading problem than it is a uh, challenging math problem. So I'm gonna actually just copy and paste this budget right down to there, because everything about it is the same. And I'll, I'll talk through it as I go. Let's see how this paste goes. Oops, it went over a little bit from where I wanted. I missed my quarter column. Uh, let's try to repaste it. We'll put it here. That's better. Okay, so again, I've still got the same company, still the same number of units to be produced, and so I still require the same amount of labor time. Now let's figure out our regular time and then the, any amount over 11,500 hours will be paid at overtime. So my regular time paid is going to be in January. How much regular time am I going to pay? Well, they work 10,000 hours, but I've got to pay them for at least 11,500 regardless of whether I have work for them to do. So. I'm going to pay 11,500 hours, even if they only have 10,000 hours of work to do. And in fact, I'm going to pay, even though it's 12,000 hours in February, I'm going to pay regular time 11,500. I'm also going to pay some overtime there. And in March, 11,500 regular hours will be paid. So uh, 
11,500 times 3 is 34,500 hours will be paid at the regular rate. Now, what about overtime? Overtime hours paid. Well, in the first month, there's no overtime, no hours of overtime, right? Because they didn't work up to 11,500. They didn't go over to get overtime. Uh, in the second month, though, they worked 12,000 hours. 11,500 were paid at regular rate. 500 hours will be paid at overtime rates. Um, in uh, the following month, it looks like 2,500 hours will be paid at overtime rate. So the total amount of overtime I'm paying here is 3,000 hours worth of overtime. So let's figure out our costs. Regular cost and overtime cost. So 11,500 times 15 for our regular cost, 172,500. And I'll put at $15, just so we remember. Our overtime is going to charge out at 15 times 1.5, right? Time and a half. 15 times 1.5 is $22.50 per hour. So uh, in the first month, there's no overtime. So that's all we need to worry about. In the second month, the regular time is 11,500 hours. Which, which works out to 172.5, and that also works out to 172.5 in the following months because it's the same for those three months. Overtime, though, 500 hours at $22.50 is uh, 1,100, $250 worth of overtime gets paid there. And then in the following month, it's 2,500 hours, 2,500 times uh, 11, no, uh, times 22.50. And that's 56,250 in overtime pay. So adding across and adding down, we need totals all the way around 172,5. 172,5 plus 11,250 is 183,750. And 172,5 plus 56,250 is 228,750. This is our total pay. And it's in dollars, of course. Everything up to here was hours. Uh, and I just need grand totals. So 172,500 times 3 is 517,500. And we got 3,000 hours of overtime at 2250. That's $67,500 worth of overtime. So our total amount to be paid here, 67.5 plus 517,500, dollars Double underline. Oops, I should scroll up so you can see. And uh, just to compare the two, you can see it's quite a difference. $45,000 difference, 540 versus 585. You know, almost a 10% difference uh, in, you know, having that sort of inflexible workforce with uh, uh, greater overtime costs. I'm not certainly trying to have an anti-union conversation here, but uh, you can certainly understand if you were managing a company, you would want maximum flexibility. You would pursue it. And that's just rational economic behavior uh, uh, from the company's perspective. And if you're running a company, that you, you would pursue that. If you were a worker, probably you'd rather be working for the second company, the second version of McCluskey Company, uh, than for the first. Okay, that's it for this video. Stay tuned for our next one.